My guest today is Charmaine McCowan, and her passion and celebration of the diversity among world people began at the age of 16 when she was traveling and attending the International High School and Musical Show Up With People. Living in private homes, palatial mansions, college dorms, and on Indian reservations, she immersed herself in a cross-cultural exchange to help bridge unity among people from every stratum of life. She was moved as she witnessed the limitless possibilities of the human spirit and took lasting notice of the vital power held in authentically connecting from the heart, an impression that remains with her today. And now she is known by many as the well-being expert. Well, welcome, Charmaine. We can certainly use a lot of that. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for having me this morning. Oh, no problem. You know, I I saw up with people. That was really a fabulous, fabulous production. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, and it was so popular then. How did you actually get involved with that? Well, I was with a local group in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm from the Midwest, and they were holding interviews for the international group in New Jersey, and my local group was in New Jersey while they were interviewing, and I interviewed, and they had like four slots left, so I'm on the phone calling my dad saying, I got accepted. I need to be in Oklahoma in two weeks, and he's saying, come home first. I'm going, but, (laughs) so anyway, and it began from there. You know, it's so funny you say that, and you were 16, because I was 16, and I was accepted into the Roxyettes, not the Rockettes, the Roxyettes, for the summer. Okay. They were doing summer tour, and they called home for me, and my mother said, give me that phone, and she <laughs> took the phone and asked the questions and did not like the answers and said, you are not going, so I oh, can wow. relate to you being 16 and wanting to do this show and going all over the place, and I stayed home. How about that? <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, fortunately, yeah, so my, I, I, yeah. my dad wanted me to go. My mom didn't, but they came to a meeting of the minds, and we realized it was one of the best experiences of my life. Well, that's the whole point. I mean, first of all, you know, you were with a group of of other young people. And even though as a Roxyette, there would be supervision, you know, when you're a dancer, it's just a whole different ball game. So my mom said, no, 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 no. (laughs) But you have a (laughs) workshop that's called Unlock Your Heart. So what can people come away from that learning? What do they, what do they experience in that? Right, right. Well, first of all, it is an experiential workshop and my audience is women. And because it's a set in a series of dialogue questions, they really come away with a renewed sense of self, and they have the opportunity to let go of the veils that sort of shield the heart, and they begin to really find comfort in what it means to be in your authentic self. So do you find, I mean, I find that there are a lot of people who are not living their true self. And I find that there are a lot of people who have so much, um, oh, what shall I say, stress and, and unsettlement in their life. Why do you think this is so? What have you discovered by working with all these people? Well, you know, I think the thing is, is we get caught into a mold of what's expected from us from our parents, from society, from whatever environment we grow up in. And we're never really taught it's okay to follow your heart. I have an incredible woman who her email is dance to doc. She's a doctor, but she loves dancing. And she's moving to that passion. And, but again, she's an African-American woman. She's the first in her family, you know, not only to do college, but to to go from there. So there were all these expectations of what she should do. And even though she's a great doctor, her passion is dance. So I think we all get put in this mold of what's expected of us. And I'm one of those, you know, I, I went to law school. I was the first in my family to do high school and an advanced degree. And I didn't like the calendar. I didn't like the authenticity. 
And quite truthfully, I took the California bar many times, came as close as like five points and never passed. And I'm like, what do I do now? And I ended up in corporate America. But even there, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I was following what everyone thought I should do. So I think, you know, I don't think we're taught early enough that it's okay to be who we are. And I, I think people get caught in that. And sometimes, especially women with husbands and families, they wait to the end to go, okay, I've accomplished this. Now what's left for me or what can I do? Well, that's probably true. You know, you and I are, are sisters in that you have, uh, you're have you a breast cancer survivor, and I'm a breast cancer survivor three times. And, oh, my uh, goodness. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and after 16 surgeries, I mean, and all the stories I hear, I'm just happy that I'm still here and able to do the things that I do. But you've overcome a lot of obstacles. So what experiences in your life led to you doing this workshop? Because evidently you went through all of this yourself. Yes, yes. Uh, It's funny. I was in corporate America. And in corporate America, it's not cool to cry. And it's not cool to feel. But it was cool to wear the suit, the hair, the heels, all the things that were expected, and more so expected from men than women. So you begin to put on this whole veil of who I was turning up and who I was, 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 you know, showing people what they expected me to show them. And then I had this epiphany that there were so many women just like me that wanted the opportunity to really shed that corporate veil and come into their own. And I just struggled in the corporate world. My work, I was great. I was excellent. It was fine. But you go home at the end of the day and say, okay, what next? And it was the same thing as really being the attorney, putting on that whole um you got to keep a court date. you got to stay in a box. And I just realized after other people, it's hard to be in any box, you know. So um, That's true. That's but, very true. Yeah. yeah. And, so and I, you know, I that. so identify with what you've just said, uh, Charmaine, and I'll tell you why. Because when I first started speaking, you know, my, my career as a professional speaker started in 1980. And I can tell you that I did these seminars. There were very few women in the speaking profession back in 1980. Now there's a whole bunch, but then there were very few. And I had to wear my navy blue suit and I had to wear that, you know, formal shirt. And I had to, you know, uh, it just wasn't me, but I, uh, because navy blue is not my color. (laughs) And uh, I I would, (laughs) and I would be teaching Tom Peters in search of excellence program. And I would get up on that stage and I would take my power stance And I would say, because they were all expecting, even though it never said anywhere in the material that was promoting it, that Tom Peters would be there. But that's what they expected. I literally, talking to an audience of 99% men, I had to stand up there in my power stance, in my navy blue suit, and say, good morning. This is Dr. Gail Carson, and I am here to teach you in search of excellence. And that's it. If I didn't get them in that 10 seconds, I didn't get them for the rest of the day. And so I know exactly what you were talking about. But you're not only a speaker and a workshop facilitator, you're an author and you're the creator of something called intuitive cards. They're called Humana T Speaks. So tell us a little bit about the book and the cards and how they help people unlock their hearts. Okay. So to begin with, when I was creating my workshops, I did this thing with the treasure chest. And in the treasure chest, women would pick a card, and there were these great sayings. When someone said, Charmaine, you just need to put it in a book and do cards. And, you know, the ego gets involved. No problem. I can do that in a month. Of course, six months later, the book and the cards came about. And I allowed the cards to really come through me. And what happens is, and the cards are used in the workshop, what happens is I believe there's no coincidence in what we get and what we choose. And people get a card, and because it's humanity speak, it's 54 wisdom cards, all that end in the TEA. So you might have audacity or simplicity or responsibility, 
all of them end with a T-E-A because it was humanity in a broader sense. And what happens is people get the cards and they go, how did you know? And I go, I didn't <laughs> because <laughs> they're drawn to whatever card they're drawn to and it gives them a message. Two women can get the exact same card and a different message. And there's usually no coincidence in the card that they get and the card that they choose. So do you have a personal favorite? I mean, do you have one that you adore that helps you unlock your heart? Um, I try to choose a card of the day, but I was thinking this morning while I was meditating, what card would I want to share and the reason? And I think there's so much turmoil going on in the world right now. And the card that came up for me was Shanti. And, of course, Shanti is a Sanskrit word for peace. And if you have a moment, I'd just like to read that card. Wow. So it That's goes, amazing. Shanti. Yeah, it goes, the river divided them, the haves and the have-nots, the darks and the lights, the goods and the evils. Across the river, they shattered their differences, claiming what they wanted was peace. Through the mist, you could see their faces. Their hearts shouting for peace, their hands holding on to war. You could hear the loud screams, the high-pitched echoes, fighting for those claimed injustices. All outward screams for peace bellowing, while the silent screams inside were bigger and louder than those outwardly heard. The silent river raging inside was creating chaos and restlessness, unparalleled by the outward screams. Then came the raging storms the fierce winds forcing both sides into the river. Both sides were drawn to the middle and caught in a current. In this river, there was a special current, a current that created a ripple in time. In this current, separation was not possible. There were no haves or have nots, no goods and evils, no darks and lights. In this current, no duality existed, only oneness. This current was magnified with the power to draw one deeper and deeper into the middle. Once drawn into the middle, the current dissipated all separation and pulled everything into its flow. And once in the flow, the current gently pulls deep into the stream of calmness, stillness, and tranquility. Here the two warring sides merged and find a resting place in peace. Does this river describe you? The two halves of yourself constantly shouting and warring. You're the one shouting to the world about peace and justice while in a constant battle with self. You're the cool, calm, collective one on the outside while chaos, confusion, and disconnection boils on the inside. You are the one wearing the clothes of peace, yet waging a daily battle in the boardroom, the classroom, and the living room. While these daily battles keep you locked outside your inner prayer room, the most important room. You are the one with the clothes, the attitude, and the titles the one in charge of every project, meeting and group, the one in control of making things happen. And you are the one that is aching, longing, and pleading for peace, peace in every aspect of your life. Now you have been forced into the river and have been pulled to the center to be bathed in this melon of peace. It is now up to you to come here and get to know this river well. Learn how to step in and be pulled to the center. And in this center, you will come to know and feel real calm, stillness, and peace. Entering this river, peace becomes tangible. So if you've drawn this card, now it's time to go find your inner river. You're going to have to let go of control and allow this river to bring you to peace wherever you may find it. Wow. So every, every card relates to a passage in the book. Yes. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Some of them are short. So, that one's a long one, but some, some of them are shorter. But that one is so my favorite and it's so powerful because, of course, it's described me when I was in that corporate world and when I got out to really begin to experience the stillness and peace of who I am. So your workshop really asks people various questions that make them reflect back on their lives. And I'm sure it makes them cry and laugh and uh, makes them think and go deeper into their life and their experience. So what were, are some of the questions um, that you ask and how, or people ask you 
and then how would you answer them? 